Deviatmans, Blessed Self, Divine Souls, Atma Pranam, Heartfelt Divine Love Light, Healing Bliss Prosperity, Blessings to each one of you from the entire lineage. Welcome each one of you. Aap sab ko abhinandan hai, aap sab ko swagat hai. Aaj ke Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita Satsanga. All of you who have joined now, like, special blessings to you. As we get together, we get stronger when we pray together. Just like we always, I always mention this, that if you break one, take one stick, you break it, it will e break easily. But when you take a stack of sticks, say you take nine sticks together, hold it tight and you try to break all nine together, it will be very difficult. So there is a reason why getting together and praying and doing satsanga is very important for the entire world. As we get together and pray, the divinity pours and showers blessings in abundance and many receive it goes further there is more force there is more light so thank you for joining and all of you who will be listening jo aage chal ke bhi sunenge ye satsang aap sab ko bhi khub aashirwad all those who will be listening in the future lots of divine blessings to you and together you will pray for everyone else. And may there be peace in the world. Samasta lokaha sukhi no bhavantu. Samasta lokaha sukhi no bhavantu. May all beings in the entire world be protected, be happy, be well nourished, have food, water, clothing, shelter. Oh Lord. May you give that knowledge, that sadhbuddhi to those who create problem for others. You are in control, O oh Lord. There is so much suffering in the world. beyond our control. Adi Devik, Lord, is in control when we human beings try to control and be, become something that Lord doesn't want us to be. May we have compassion. May this prayer reach all those who do not have compassion. May that compassion, may that heart be receiving this energy. To bring that divine love and compassion for others also. When we say mine, 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 then there is limitation. Wrong things happen. May this prayer of unity reach each and everyone to be protected and especially reach those 
who do not understand that they are hurting others. May Lord touch their hearts and minds also. The mind becomes so strong towards the negative side that there is emptiness in the heart. May that heart become full of compassion and effulgence of light towards themselves and towards others. May Lord be in control. May the children not suffer. They are innocent. They are ignorant. They know Lord from the heart. They do not know how to cheat others. But as we grow, when the world starts touching them in negative way, they learn the negatives. May there be purity. May there be positivity. May this prayer reach the doctors, the nurses, and everyone, the firefighters, all those selfless servicemen who serve at various places where there is so much pain. They go in the rubbles, they go in the flood zone, they go in the fire zone, they jump into it to help humanity who need help and not only humanity they help the pets the birds the animals they protect them may lord give them energy and may lord protect them in every way so they are able to help All those who are sick, O oh Lord, help them, bless them, and heal them. So that they know you also, May we all follow integral yoga. Karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga. Raj yoga. That means hatha yoga and meditation. A little bit of exercise for all of us is needed. A little is enough but consistency is very important helping in small way serving in small way is a big help for those who are in need for the person who is drowning even when they find the straw flowing in the river, they try to get hold of that. And sometimes that straw saves their lives. As we sit at the lotus feet of our Guru, our Supreme Lord Consciousness who is 
one with our Guru. We humbly bow down and surrender ourselves with open heart and mind so that we can receive the blessings. Sharanagatam, Sharanagatam Krishna, Sharanagatam Krishna. Brahmanandam, Paramasukadam, Kevalam Yanamurtim. Dvanvatitam Vagana Sadrisham Tatvamasya Dilaksham Ekam Nityam Vimalamachalam Saravadhi Sakshi Bhutam Bhavatitam Trigunarahitam Sadgurum Tam Namami Sargurum tam namami, Sargurum tam namami. Adorations to the Divine Preceptor, who is the bliss of Brahman, the giver of supreme joy, the embodiment of pure consciousness, beyond the pairs of opposites, vast like the ether, infinite, eternal, Beyond all modifications, to that divine Guru, we offer our adorations. Gurudev's message for today. Blessed Self Adorations, Devi Atman, Atma Pranams, Adorations. Meditate upon the presence of the Divine Self in the depths of your heart. Enjoy the sweetness of surrender as you set aside the entire burden of life. Aapko anubhuti hoga. Wo. Wo mithas. Wo param shanti. जब आप आत्म समर्पण करोगे, total surrender. So let us all surrender every burden, every pain, every worry at the lotus feet of our Guru and. The supreme, your ish, they are one. For everything is thine, O oh Lord, nothing is mine. I'm your instrument, I'm the instrument in your hands. May you take over everything. Surrender and relax. Prabhu ke charno me sab kuch samar pan kar ke har ek chinta har ek duk har ek pira 
प्रभु के चरणों में अर्पण है गुरु जी के चरणों में अर्पण है वही शक्ति देंगे हम आपके हाथों में बांसुरी Feel the sustaining hand of God behind every occurrence, whether pleasant or pain, चाहे दुख हो चाहे सुख हो। प्रभु का सत्ता है, प्रभु का हाथ है। सृष्टि वही बनाए हैं, वही चला रहे हैं। प्रभु आपको समर्पण है, सब कुछ। सुख दुख हर पल आपका है। Feel how the divine self who is the controller of the universe, who has in his body countless world systems. Bahut bada baat hai. Bahut bada baat hai ki prabhu ke andar kya nahi hai. Hum sab unhi ke andar hi hai aur phir prabhu humare andar hai. Sab kuch पता नहीं कितना दुनिया उनके अंदर है, इतने बड़ा है प्रभु। The whole world is inside the Lord, and Lord is inside us. Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, everywhere, every pebble, every leaf, where is the place where you can't find God or you can't see God, God is everywhere. That same God is in us, sitting in the cave of our heart that runs this little universe. Have that faith. Prabhu unko shakti dijiye. Prabhu unko bhakti dijiye. प्रभु हमको विश्वास दीजिए Bless us with the deep, deep devotion the deep faith and the divine energy to be able to sustain everything His body has countless world systems can be captured in your heart by the force of devotion. Wo param bhakti, jo para bhakti bolte hai. Para bhakti, maare hirdeh mein hi. Humko jagrit karna, we have to awaken that deep devotion within the heart. It's only if we have a deep devotion. Everything is for you, Lord. Pray not for the objects that perish. It's such a big take for yourself moving forward. Keep reminding yourself everything that is transient. This too shall pass. Jo kuch bhi gujar raha hai. जो खत्म हो जाता, शुरू हुआ, फिर उसका अंत भी है। वो उसके पीछे मत भागो। Don't run after that item that is transient, that has a beginning and an end. Don't run, that is perishable. One day it will finish, one day it will end. But what should you run after? Gurudev says, but run after the divine love. That divine love is never ending. So if you give the divine love, you receive the divine love in abundance, in many folds. The divine love, but for the divine love, that dissolves the very sense of individuality. Even your children, your husband, your mother, your father, give them the divine love. 
So in that case, whether there is some negative things happening, some pain going on, if you give divine love, you don't feel that hurt. You will be able to bear it because that is divinity in the others also. But physically it seems so real. People are suffering. And yes, there is pain. But we say this is transient. This will pass. Our self, the Atman, the soul is not in pain. Shat, shant, sat, chit, ananda, always in peace. And that never ends. There's no beginning, no end. That's what merges with the Supreme Consciousness upon liberation. Otherwise, it keeps taking another embodiment. May God bless you. Dai Swami Jyotir Mayananda Ji Maharaj. Hari Hi Om Tatsang. Let's hear now. Kirtan. Jaya Ganesh, Jaya Ganesh, Jaya Ganesh, Pahi Maam, Shri Ganesh, Shri Ganesh, Shri Ganesh, Rachyamam, Sharavanam Bhava, Sharavanam Bhava, Sharavanam Bhava, Pahi Maam, Kartikeya, 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 Rachyamam, Jaya Saraswati, Jaya Saraswati, Jaya Saraswati, Pahi Maam, Shri Saraswati, Shri Saraswati, Shri Saraswati, Raksha Maam, Jaya Guru Shiva Guru Hari Guru Ram, Jagat Guru Param Guru Sat Guru Shyam, Adi Guru Advais Guru Anand Guru Om, Chid Guru Chid Ghan Guru Chid Maya Guru Om, Jagat Guru Om Guru Satchitananda, Shankracharya Shivananda, Jyotirmayananda, Shankracharya Shivananda, Jyotirmayananda, Shankracharya Shivananda, Jyotirmayananda, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Shiva, 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Ramachandraya Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Anjaneya 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 Pahima Hanumanta 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 Rakshamam Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Shakti Pahima Brahma Shakti Vishnu Shakti Shiva Adi Shakti Maha Shakti Para Shakti Pahima Ichcha Shakti Kriya Shakti Jnani Shakti Rakshama Gangarani 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 Pahima Bhagirati, 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 Rakshamam, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari 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 Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari 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 Om, Om Shanti Om Shanti, Om Shanti Om, Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Om. Om 
And when many punyas fructify over many lives, we are pulled in this direction where we enjoy this nectar and we quickly, slowly, not quickly, but slowly, melodiously enjoy the journey and then eventually attain mukti, self-realization. That is the focus and Bhagavad Gita is our Sunday satsang. And we had completed chapter number five last Sunday. And today we are starting from chapter number six. So chapter five was Karma Sanyas Yoga. And we covered that in a lot of detail. How to control anger, desires, and what is karma, what is action, what is sanyas, renunciation. And chapter six will focus on Dhyana Yoga. Dhyana yoga is very important. It's meditation. Meditation, dhyana, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Three things. One is learning how to meditate. Initial stages. Then we go a little bit deeper where we are able to hold the object of concentration. Whatever we are focusing on. And the third and the final stage is samadhi. Samadhi is not an easy state to attain. It will take a lot of effort, practice, because in that state, we transcend time and we transcend space, which is called the prapanch. We attain our swarupa. Swarup means sat chitananda. We are in our essential nature when we are beyond time and space. When else are you beyond time and space? When you don't do any effort, that is in your deep sleep state. In deep sleep state, you don't know how time is passing and there is no name and form. You are beyond dreams. You are beyond your waking state. But in that state of deep sleep, usthiti me, there is ignorance. Ignorance is avidya. Avidya is uh, the latent process that is keeping our body alive, the breath is working, the heart is functioning, all that is happening. But we are beyond time and space in that state. When we wake up, we immediately come back to time and space again and we remember, get our bearings and start our work, make our breakfast, cook, go to work, do our worldly activities and so on. So, Meditation is the conscious awareness of this process where you take this knowledge and now implement it while you are awake. So converting your deep sleep state into your waking state, but now you are aware of that. That is the terms that yogis use. They call it Sahaj Samadhi. You must have heard of that. But very few people act actually are able to practice it where whether they are working, talking, eating, doing their functions, but yet inwardly they are totally detached from everything that is happening in the world and they are connected to God, which means wo sahaj samadhi sthiti mein apni atma se jude hain, apne surup se jude hain aur bahar jo bhi ho raha hai, jo bhi karya kar rahe hain, wo 
शरीर से हो रहा है उनका उनके अंदर का जो चित्त है वो समाधि स्थिति में है दैट इज द गोल फॉर एवरी फॉर एवरी वन ऑफ अस हम सब के लिए वो हमारा लक्ष्य है तो लक्ष्य तक पहुंचने के लिए भगवान हमको ये ध्यान योग करा रहे हैं सो टू रीच टू दैट गोल लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज ट्राइंग टू गाइड अस थ्रू दिस सिक्स चैप्टर इज कॉल्ड ध्यान योग और द योग ऑफ मेडिटेशन तो श्लोका नंबर फर्स्ट श्री भगवान उवाच गॉड से अनाश्रित कर्म फलम कार्यम कर्म करोती यह सन्यासी च योगी च न निर अग्निर न चाक्रिय दियोगा ऑफ मेडिटेशन स्वामी जी एक्सप्लेन्स इन समरी फोर चैप्टर सिक्स मेडिटेशन इज द मोस्ट प्रोफाउंड एंड इफेक्टिव टेक्निक इन द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ कर्म योग Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga. The present chapter, therefore, elaborates upon the art of practicing meditation, which is the basis of all the mystic movements of the world. So, Shloka number one. Lord Krishna said, "A true sannyasi and yogi." is one who performs actions without depending upon the fruits of his actions not one who has merely renounced the sacrificial fire and the performance of rituals you will see swami ji will explain the difference between the the two but some take it wrongly भगवान बोले जो पुरुष कर्म फल का आश्रय न लेकर करने योग्य कर्म करता है वह सन्यासी तथा योगी है और केवल अग्र का त्याग करने वाला सन्यासी नहीं है तथा केवल क्रियाओं का त्याग करने वाला योगी नहीं करने है वाला Hari Om, Hari Om Tat Sat. Hari Om Tat Sat. So beautiful shloka. I am seeing somebody's comment here saying volume is not on. I think your volume may be low, but I think Alex is saying that. But can somebody please tell us if you can listen to us? Okay. I see Shri Ram Ji, Namaskar, uh, or anybody else who is here. Uh, I can hear. I can hear well. My Facebook is on. Okay. So okay, looks like our volume is okay. So we will continue. Uh, so check your own the volumes of your own computers or cell phones, or try to log in again if you are having problem with volume. Okay. Thank you, Shiramji. Shiramji just answered. Uh, volume is good. So Alex G. Maybe your problem is on your side. Yeah. Uh, maybe your computer is not very. Yeah. Um, Shri can hear. Asha Devi can hear. Yogini Urmila Devi can hear. Uh, Roshni Singh can hear. Priya Kio can hear. Kishore. Ji. Okay, so we are good. Uh -huh. Thank you all of you. Thank you all of and you. thank you, Kishore Ji. Um, so good to see you um, during this satsang. So let us go deeper into this shloka. अनाश्रितः कर्म फलम कार्यम कर्म करोति यह स सन्यासी च योगी च न निर अग्निर न चाक्रिय सो वेरी क्लियरली गॉड इज एक्सप्लेनिंग दैट जिसने कर्म का फल का आश्रय ना लिया हो कर्म फल की तृष्णा से रहित है वॉट डज दैट मीन दैट समबडी हु इज डूइंग एक्शन बट ही इज डूइंग इट विदाउट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ द फ्रूट द रिजल्ट नॉट overly consumed by what's it going to give me you are doing it for uh, this is called nishkamya seva or you are doing it selflessly you are doing it for others therefore you are not centering yourself in the middle of that karma you are you are doing it for the welfare of others 
That's why this becomes very important if we want to succeed in meditation. We have to calm down our rajas and tamas. Rajas is our activity, desires, inertia, our possessions that we are always running after because they constantly agitate our chitta, our consciousness. And therefore, um, God is guiding us that when we do karma fal tyag, which means we do the actions, but we are not worried about the result of the action. The result obviously will come. It will be, if you have done good actions, good result will come. If you have done bad, bad will come. It is the law. It has to happen. But for us, overly attaching to the to the expectation is what Lord Krishna is saying. We should take that out. That is not our department. It's not our job to worry about that. It is God's daiv. It's called the divine grace. Otherwise, so many times the best of the effort happens, things still don't succeed. Sometimes with very little effort, things succeed. So it's all the cycle of karma here that God is explaining. So karma falki trishna wala jo hota hai, wahi karma fal ka ashray leta hai. So what is God now further explaining that if we have desires, built-in desires, we want something, therefore we are doing the work, therefore our expectation is when will I get it, when will that happen, when will my uh, desire be fulfilled, we are taking, uh, we are holding the fruit as the base of our karma. So if there was no fruit, there would be no karma. If we don't get paid, we won't go to work. So that is the, the basis here that God is trying to say. Now we have to be practical. Not everything can be totally nishkamya. Of course, you have to pay mortgage bills. You have to take care of your health. You have to uh, be comfortable. So this is not what God is talking about. He's talking about actions that are being done in a selfless manner. Volunteer work when you do. You don't expect anything, but you are doing it to help a cause. You believe in something. And uh, much in the same way, all the satsangs, all when you guide somebody, when you answer a question, it is all nishkamya seva. So that is because you are not holding on to the fruit of the action. You are uh, following your duty as a hu good human being. तो ना निर अग्निर न चाक्रिय तो अब ऐसा है कि जो ऐसे कर लेता है suppose somebody is able to do the karma and also detach from the fruit now pay attention very important for us to understand because you can be doing the same exact karma remember we talked about this uh, in the last lesson also, in the last class, if we are doing karma and then we are also attached to the fruit, we are, uh, in, in other words, we are doing worldly activities. That is sakamya. It is with an expectation. But when we take the fruit out, it becomes um, without expectation. Action is exactly the same. No change in your action. So if a uh, uh, doctor is performing a surgery and he is getting a paycheck for it, that is sakamya and perfectly okay because that's how everything will function. But when he takes time out and helps patients as charity work, doesn't charge them anything, that is nishkamya karma. So please understand the difference. He is doing the same exact surgery there as he is doing in the hospital. But when he is doing it for worldly uh, benefit without benefiting himself, that is nishkamya. And when he does it for uh, the same activity, activity has not changed. Much in the same way, whatever. Doctor is just an example, a surgery. But it could be anything you do. Anything that you are doing in a way to help the world. Yeah, but not not with the expectation that I'll do this for this person and he will do something else in return. For so no when, expectation of even a thing you should be there. Exactly. And that is why it's called nishkamya. 
So even if we expect, uh, if we expect some response, generally people are courteous. They will say, okay, Swamiji, very good, very good. But if they don't, then also we should be giving in the same exact way because this is God's, we are God's mission. If not this person, somebody else, you continue the journey. So here, uh, if he has given up the fruits and he is doing the karma, then according to Lord Krishna, he is saying he is a sannyasi plus a yogi. Think about how, what a beautiful way God is giving us. We don't have to go to the forest. You don't have to do intense tapasya. You don't have to meditate for years under uh, strict rules. No such thing. He's saying you continue to lead your life like you are doing presently, but bring more holistic balance into it. Bring more compassion, love and caring of the world. And that if you are able to do, do your actions and detach the fruit, then according to Lord Krishna, he says you are a sannyasi plus a yogi. Now, who is a sannyasi? Sannyas, meaning of sannyas is renunciation. Renunciation means tyag. Tyag means, okay, I'm, I'm now going to live my life for God. Therefore, I'm renouncing worldly objects. But nobody can completely renounce, you see. We still have to eat. We still have to sleep. We still have to wear clothes. We still have to interact. But the question is how much? So sannyasis and uh, people who are on the spiritual path, uh, sadhaks even, serious sadhaks also are qualify exactly because internally they are totally aligned with this thought process that the world is unreal, God is real, everything else is transient, just like we read Swamiji's message now, Swamiji was reading. Everything is transient and therefore nothing really matters. What matters to us is, is really our effort towards spirituality. So therefore renouncing becomes not very hard. It becomes an easy process. And initially it feels very hard. Oh, I'll have to give up this. I'll have to give up that. What if I don't make that much money? But once you jump in the water, you start swimming and God's grace and divine plan takes over. You become instruments of God. So that is what sannyas means. And you can be a mental sannyasi. You don't have to wear orange clothes like we are wearing. You don't have to have like full time immersion into this. You can be doing your worldly duties and still uh, achieve the same result of God realization and happiness and peace and bliss. But you have to know the technique. You have to know the proper way of doing it. And that's where Lord Krishna is helping us. He is telling us that sannyas is the name of Tiyaka and the one who is the sannyas. And then what is yoga then? Yoga is when you have reconciled the the chitta within you. You have understood what is happening inside your mind, brain, senses, ego, intellect. What is all that? So when you start controlling that, you become a yogi. Yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyahar, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. So this is the eight steps of Ashtanga Yoga as explained by the father of yoga, Patanjali Maharaj. So it's a very detailed um, um, study and that also will connect you with God in a, by understanding your inner instruments. External instruments humko dikhta hai, aankh dikhta hai, naak dikhta hai. We can see you walk, talk, how we look, how tall we are, what language we speak, what kind of action, uh, accent we have and so on. But what we cannot see is what kind of thoughts you are thinking right now, what's happening in your intellect, how big our egos are. No, we, those are not visible. Wo hamare mein hai. And those are inner, inner instruments. So therefore, those inner instruments have to be uh, purified. So when we do this uh, prayer, we, we say, Om Apavitra Pavitra Va Sarvavastham Gato Piva Yasmareta Pundari Kaksham Sabaya Bhyantara Shuchihi. So what we mean by that is that Apavitra Pavitra Va, so suppose you have not had time to be fully 
taking a shower or clean, but you just wash your face and you have now you are ready for your meditation. So you are basically saying, okay, God, I am purifying this environment around me. I am I'm purifying the external body and also the internal instruments so I can sit and think about you and may this whole environment be sanctified and pure. Pure. Now it is much better to take a shower, <laughs> to clean yourself, to be pure, pure, light a dia, light a candle, light an incense. If you have the time and the energy and it's you have the right atmosphere. But suppose you are traveling, you don't have that luxury, you are thinking, you still have to. So then there you can mentally chant this mantra and be and be dedicated. God is not looking after our formal processes as much as how much we are following our daily uh, dedication to him and routines. So, this is yoga. Hai. So, we explained what is sannyasa and what is yoga. Now, in the olden days, this sannyasa, sannyas was a very difficult process. Even today, in some segments in India, sannyas is, a, is an extremely difficult thing to do, uh, which means that people who are um, in the traditional system, they would have to have a line across their house and when they would leave, and for, for all these people who have left, like uh, um, Shankaracharya ji and all these, these big saints who have achieved this in the olden days, that was the, the process that they would cut ties with everybody, which means that no family member would belong to them or for seven years they would not talk to anybody their mother father this that so that is those were the rules to make them strong uh, because detachment is not easy so they were given a bigger when they were young they especially the younger ones because if you are if you don't have enough vairagya that was the reasoning uh, and so therefore you would you have renounced everything right renunciation means there is a uh, even my body doesn't belong to me. That's true renunciation. Therefore, who's my father? Who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? Who's my uncle? That's That was the bigger, bigger aspect of looking at it. But the way our Guruji now has explained it and modified it, and which is what the path we are following now, is he basically says, look, the whole world is your family and the entire universe is your home. So don't even, you don't have to exclude anybody. You don't have to say, no, you are no longer my son or you are no longer my brother or my uncle or my parents. Everybody, you love them more and more, which means that your cup becomes so big that the <laughs> whole world fits into it and it still spills over which means you love your parents, you love your sister, your uncle, your aunts, but you are not overly engaged in their menial activities. You bless them, you move on. Inwardly, you are detached. Please understand what we are saying. Inwardly, family, you start, it's like a, a little dot in the middle, you, and then, of course, with you is your God and your guru, and then your family, your family, and then you are a small circle. And then becoming uh, yogi or becoming um, more spiritual, you have a bigger, you have friends, you have others joining you. And then after that, once you become sannyas, your circle becomes so big. It's the entire world is your family. So you have to... So all included. Mm, correct. So that's the important aspect of uh, what we are meaning by sannyas. It is not a process of exclusion, rather it is a process of inclusion, but yet you are totally aloof. You are totally still excluded from that, everybody, if that makes sense. Then, uh, but in the past days, the processes were very structured and very rigid. People had to study the Vedas. They had to study for 12 years under a guru and they had to know a lot of things and then they had to give up Agni. So once you became, you, you wore these orange, plus you had to be a Brahmachari, you could not be married and so on. Later, those things changed with time. Uh, they changed. Uh, but basically the thought was that uh, don't touch fire and don't do actions because now your role is to 
connect to God and therefore meditate, meditate, meditate. That's what they were taught to do. And they literally did it for a long, long time. So here when God, uh, Shankara Chariji, Lord Krishna is saying, na nirag nirna chakriya, God is trying to bring this knowledge to the world that don't just think if you see a sannyasi that he, if he is not touching fire, they are, they, many sannyasis in India, even today, they don't cook. They are not allowed to touch fire and the reasoning for that so is the oath they were given that's why yeah they were given the oath plus the other reasoning is that the focus is not to be about the belly it is about god and therefore when you become a divine instrument food will come automatically god's plan will feed you he's feeding 8.4 million species and that's what happened there are there even today there are so many sannyasis in the himalayas and other regions of the world who have controlled their appetite and food or some villagers nearby they take care of their needs they bring them the right milk quantity or whatever they want for their uh, needs but since those are very very rare examples we are talking more about our practical world today we are living in this kali yoga even sannyasis today have cell phones they have <laughs> they are on whatsapp they are on facebook they are doing all these uh, uh, satsangas on through this online media so we cannot totally separate ourselves from this world that is the point we are trying to make so use the world for your benefit but like a boat riding on the water but don't let this water come inside of you make sure your boat doesn't have holes in it and that is the most important uh, thing we as whether we are sannyasis or not it doesn't matter and in this shloka the reason we have taken this time to explain to you is that with time and age we all evolve we all evolve, you see, we all get better and better. We refine things. And even with technology, um, you know, every day we are making more progress, much in the same way. Even a lot of these spiritual teachings are becoming more practical. We have to make it more practical because life is complicated. It is complex and it is not so easy to find peace and bliss in today's world. Even though we have more, um, more technology today, we have more resources, we have more availability of things, what has gone down is our happiness, our peace. That doesn't exist. Everybody is running, 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 frustrated, stressed out. Why? Because, oh, my boss wants this or I have this problem or that problem. Now, these problems have always existed. Sukh dukh means, sukh means happiness, dukh means pain, pain is problems and uh, sukh is happiness. So this all comes through our karma and stuff, but we have created a lot of uh, complexity and therefore these teachings of Gita are as good today or actually even more important today than they were at that time. Because at the, that time, people were still very ethical. They were still very good. They were still very virtuous and holistic. And so peace was naturally there. But now due to rajas and tamas, due to inertia and due to this activity and running after wealth, name, fame, egos, uh, the process has become more difficult. So therefore, God is saying, if you study this, then... Bhagavan Vacha, he is saying, do your karma, do your duties, detach the fruit. Now, even detaching the fruit is not that easy. It will take time and effort, but it's not in your control. That's something that we get from the divine energy, divine plan. So what do you have in control? What do we? We have in control our self-effort. Therefore, we can give in our 100% and say, God, I have offered my fruit to you, my body, my mind, my intellect. I have taken all these things and I have given it as an offering at your lotus feet. You become his instrument, attach yourself to him, then do your duty. Then it is not your problem. If it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, it's God's problem. Why? Because you gave it to him. But the question is, were you sincere when you gave it to him? Aapki shuddhata honi chahiye, pavitrata honi chahiye. Toh Bhagwan, he is carrying the whole cosmos we just read. 
he is within us we are within him and how many uh, world systems are within his body so therefore we should never think uh, well will he have time to listen to my prayers will he have time to do this no he has time for everything to yahan par wo bata rahe hain ki don't just think that these so called spiritually clad people wearing orange clothes and big tilaks and giving geeta shlokas are holier than thou he is saying that is not the case at all you may be a working person but you may be and you may be having a job and having a family but you may be very elevated you may be much higher than the, than the so called um, people uh, you know uh, who are wearing the attire it's not about the external it this is an inner movement now why do we wear it you may ask why do we have to follow this sanyas tradition because it simplifies our life we are not here to uh, get name fame or anything but it is just a, and it reminds us of the sun the sun is full of light therefore this orange means light and therefore sun is the biggest sanyasi see he is all alone and yet he radiates the whole world there is so much energy coming from that all these solar companies are making billions of dollars they don't give him anything but the sun doesn't care you see he is there and much in the same way uh, if you want to you still have to remain in the world but try to detach as much as you can through your practices but yet be in the world you cannot reject it we cannot totally give it up but yes it's our choice of how deeply you want to get involved if you are going to every party every this which movie is coming which political actor is going to win uh, what's which party what you there is there are multiple things that will consume your life and you will not have any time to practice spirituality so one thing we have to do is when you take sanyas which means that all your activities have to be spiritual which means even if you are uh, watching something make sure what you are watching is uh, good for your eyes and good for your heart and good for your consciousness internet has all kinds of things isn't it so this is what the options have to be for us here i hope this uh, shloka is clear then anashritah karma phalam karyam if you are not dependent on the fruit but you are doing your duties as a duty as nishkam me seva then there is no difference between a sanyasi and you you are a yogi and a sanyasi and this is coming from the highest authority it's coming from lord krishna himself so then he goes on to the next chapter next shloka god says yam sanyasamiti prahur yogam tam vidhi pandava na hayya sanyast sankalpo yogi bhavati kashchana oh arjun whatever the scriptures say about sanyas the same also applies to yoga because without renouncing without renouncing the fruits of actions no one can become a yogi so oh, sorry the english hindi हे अर्जुन जिसको सन्यास ऐसा कहते हैं उसी को तू योग जान क्योंकि संकल्पों का त्याग न करने वाला कोई भी पुरुष योगी नहीं होता हरिओम तक हरिओम तक सर so here god is validating what we have just discussed in a lot of detail in the previous shloka god says shruti smriti ke gyata purush sarv karm aur unke phal tyag ko vastavik sanyas kehte hain so which means shruti is the vedas vedas and from uh, all this knowledge that we have heard the wise people they say that whatever actions we do but we have renounced the fruit that 
bhag, that emotion that comes within us where we don't want the fruit, that is called sannyasa, renunciation. Otherwise, the uh, desires will continue to pull you into the world process. So he says, karma nushthan rup yoko tu bhi vahi vastavik sannyas jan. So here God is double doubling down on his thought process and saying the same thing here. That if you can do the same thing, so who, who is a sannyasi? Like he was doing actions, now he's not doing actions, he's meditating somewhere and he has uh, pulled outside himself outside the world process and he is doing that fine and now God is saying you can do the same thing within this world is sansar mein rehkar aap keval asakti ko chhod do uh, do it with detachment and do it with a selfless attitude then you and that sannyasi are the same क्योंकि जो परमार्थ सन्यासी है वह सब कर्म साधनों का त्याग कर चुकता है सो एज अ सन्यासी दे जस्ट गो विद देयर बॉडी दे डोंट हैव एनी मनी दे डोंट हैव एनीथिंग नो पोजेशंस दे हैव गिवन देमसेल्व्स टू गॉड बिकॉज़ गॉड हैज प्रॉमिस्ड योग क्षेमम वहां में हम आई विल टेक केयर ऑफ यू सो देन दे फॉर देम देयरफॉर द कर्मास आर नॉट नीडेड दिस इज अकॉर्डिंग टू लॉर्ड कृष्णा दोस पीपल हु आर highly um, into vairagya vairagya has taken hold which means dispassion is so strong that for them all duties are off they become god particles and god says okay come to me i will take care of everything for the rest of us he says you are still uh, all you have to do is just give up the uh, the fruits you don't have to give up the karma in those cases, the sannyasis have also given up the karma. Although the karma can never fully be given up, as we just said, they also have to eat, they have to sleep, and they have to have shelter. But what kind of shelter? They sleep on a rock. They are comfortable. You and I will not be comfortable sleeping on a rock or eating just whatever, just five drops of water. And then if you don't get anything, then that is also God's plan. So that is not, it's a, it's a very difficult path. And many, many people have attained mukti from that path. So we are, we are, it's a very difficult path. But for most people in today's Kali Yuga, who are living with families and earning and also having desires and wearing clothes and this, that, for them, they have to be more practical and understand the deeper meaning. And here God is validating the same thing again, that you also, by giving up the fruit of that action and see how Lord Krishna keeps insisting about action, action. He says, keep on doing your karma. Here we are as sannyasis, we can always say there is no... Uh, let us be doing, reading more or doing whatever. No, we have to do selfless work. Jnana Yajna is equally an important part of the sannyasa process to share this knowledge with one and all. Whoever wants it, we will take time and share. Only then are we doing our role uh, as true sannyasis. So therefore, he says, don't uh, be too attached to the fruit. Now, most people are attached to the fruit. Otherwise, even people who were doing uh, Agnihotra. Agnihotra is uh, they have desires to go to heaven. They want more luxuries. They may be giving up um, now. They may be fasting now so they can go to Swarga. Swarga is heaven and heaven is a transient process again with much, much more luxuries only. That's the only difference. But when those karmas, your actions will come down after you have exhausted your, just like you go for vacation, you have a nice budget and you enjoy. And then when the money goes down, now you have to come back. Much in the same way, all these people who are doing all these activities and um, are good people, mind you. They are not bad people. They just don't know. Or for them, the luxuries and the pleasures of the world are supreme. They want all kinds of comforts and God gives them those comforts also. So for them, the process becomes much uh, more, uh, it's like a highway, a slower, longer journey. And they keep on evolving. And eventually one day where Agya comes and they go and touch that uh, infinity. Whereas uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to speed up the process 
for worldly people and for all of us living in this world to say, if we do take that path, it may take many embodiments and who knows when we will get the human embodiment again. So we kind of have a sense of urgency. We have achieved this human embodiment through great grace of God. So therefore, if we use our time wisely, we can definitely uh, make a big dent in our progress. And God has clearly explained which means wherever you leave and we pass away, we die, we will start from where we have left off. And if we are fortunate, if we are lucky, then and we have been sincere on this path, then we may get mukti, krama mukti, krama mukti or sadhya mukti or jivan mukti. There are three ki different kinds of mukti also, liberation. So jivan mukti is the, is the highest because you are still living and you have achieved uh, liberation. So therefore, now you can guide people through your practical anubhav, practical experience. And there are not very many enlightened people in this world, very few. So that is the hardest. And then there are sadhaks, advanced sadhaks, serious sadhaks who are actually constantly thinking, praying, and, uh, and many sannyasis who are actually working on this path, but they didn't reach uh, uh, jivan mukti state, but they have yet um, propelled themselves to a very high level and therefore they get krama mukti, which means they don't come back to earth again, but they are uh, born in higher regions and higher regions. This is what Gita and the Upanishads guide us. So you keep going uh, in those realms and eventually you still get mukti. Krama means sequence. So therefore you go in sequential stage, but that is equally good. There is nothing you, we shouldn't say, I want only this. Whatever we can get as Atma Prasadat, whatever Prasad, whatever uh, God gives us, because Mukti is not a, a bargain. It is not a course. It is not a study um, of like you study uh, so many years, you will become a doctor. You study so many years, you will become an engineer. There is no such thing like this in Jivan Mukti. In order to become um, Jivan Mukt, you have to be absolutely pure and you have to be God like. At that point, there is no difference between you and God. So, all uh, that is the concept of Jivan Mukti, and it comes through Bhagavad Kripa. It comes through God's grace. That's why we say be compassionate, have love, have humility. Isiliya yesa bola jata hai, yoki iske bina keval gyan se. Just by remembering shlokas or by having um, worldly knowledge, we will not be able to succeed. Therefore, we need bhakti, devotion, tears in our eyes. And just like we are lost from our mother and we want to connect back with our mother, we should have that yearning to get back. And then we do our studies with that focus is what God is also suggesting here. But it comes through Bhagavad Kripa, hmm? Jeevan Mukti. But we should not be in a rush. This is, this is not a course that we will complete. This is like our breath. Satsang should be like our breath. It should accompany us till the last minute, till we depart. So here, this is what God is saying. Ki jisne fal vishayak sankalpo ka yani ichhao ka tyag na kiya ho, aisa koi bhi karmi yo so here God is saying very clearly, if you have not given up the fruits and you have still many desires, then whether you are doing action, you cannot be a yogi. You are fine. You are doing actions, no doubt. But you are not a yogi. You are just a worldly person, according to God. But if you are doing the same action with a thought of helping others, being or trying to connect with God, then we are starting to walk on the uh, yoga. He says, Aise purushka chit samadhist hona sambhav nahi hai. So this worldly person who is wanting things cannot succeed in samadhi. God is saying it, not you and me. He's saying it in the shloka. He's saying, Kyoki fal ka sankalp hi chit ke vikshep ka karan hai. This is what Shankaracharya ji has now further expanded on. Why won't, why won't he be a yogi? 
he's also doing the same action. Then the subtle explanation here is Lord Shankaracharya ji is saying, because he has got that root of that desire that has now taken hold in his consciousness, just like a weed that has a root now, and it will keep on growing more and more depending on how many things we do. Much in the same way, this root of desire has now entered, penetrated in that person, and it will create agitation. Chitta ke vikshep ka karan hai. And it's so interesting. Today we have, uh, in our Facebook post today, we have talked about vikshepa. Vikshepa is distractions. And distractions are happening constantly. So that's a nice uh, um, <clears throat> coincidence that this vikshep came at the same exact time. So this is what uh, God is saying. Uh, because of the vikshepa in our consciousness, we cannot focus. How can you meditate? In order to meditate, you have to be beyond this uh, world time and space. Remember, we discussed that. So time and space ko hatana itna asaan nahi hai when you have the desire, which means that that agitation will not let you meditate. Some other thought will come. Oh, I have this project. I have to meet this person. Or oh, this may happen. That may happen. So the more we create... Um, some things are needed just for us to live in this world. We need to do them. So they are essential activities. So beyond essential activities, you be the judge and you prioritize your activities. If they are just a wasted time, wasted effort and no value added, you cut those things. Take that time to... Um, Increase your consciousness, do more satsanga, do more japa. That's what God is talking about. So, oh, wahi yogi phir ho jata hai. So, is prakar parmart sanyas ki or karm yogi ki karta bhav ke sambandh rakhne wali jo tyag vishay ek samanta hai. So, here God is saying the key word is uh, renunciation of uh, what? Renunciation, a sannyasi is renouncing his job, his worldly things, and he is moved into the jungle. But over there also, he will eat something, live something, and do something. But his needs are very, very basic, and he's contented. But for other people, God says, you don't have to take that path. So we repeat here. He says, all you have to do is give up the desires that are holding you on to that thing, which means... Most people will say, then why do anything if I'm not going to get anything? And exactly that is the point. If we think like that, we will be worldly only. You will succeed. You will be having lots of seminars. You may make millionaires. You may become a billionaire and you may be very successful. But yet worldly, we are not talking about worldly success. We are talking about spiritual success. We are talking about mukti and liberation. And that's a whole different path. So God says you can take that using the same action, but you your intent has to be pure. Aapki jo vichar hai, wo shuddh hona chahiye. To, then you are also renouncing. So what are we renouncing? In this, in your case, in our case, in the living in the world, we are renouncing the fruit. The sannyasi is renouncing the actions in the world itself. You see what I'm saying? He is very contented with very minimum things and, and he is now connected to God. We, God, is, God says, you give up the fruits of the actions, which means don't have be constantly smelling, thinking about it. When will it happen? When will it happen? Why did it not happen? No, just do your duty, move on. So this is again, God is explaining the same difference, but he, these are very important, subtle points to understand because if we misunderstand them, karma is very complicated and even very highly intellectual people get confused with karma. Therefore, there is this uh, Lord Krishna keeps on bringing us back to this point again and again. And as our Guruji calls it, Gada Parinyaya. You keep on repeating like we, we hammer a nail. 
and it's we keep hammering it and then one it's once it's fully in we give it one more just so we are fully confident that the nail is completely that it has sunk in so god god is trying to do the same thing and here some of you may think there are so much there are so much repetitions and so many shlokas are kind of trying to say the same thing in different ways and that is intentional the answer is that is exactly god's point he wants us to understand it so deeply so profoundly that it becomes your psyche just like you now can run you can walk but at one time you couldn't do it but by repetition repetition so when geeta finishes start it again if you already know a shloka repeat it again keep on doing it for the rest of your life it's not like a textbook you say oh i've already studied that i've already done that i have read this no because scriptures are holy and they give themselves to you bit by bit please understand this and this is very true scriptures are locked you see they are password coded so you read them you will understand something next time you read it you will understand something more then you read it you will understand some it's the same shloka but every time based on your purity your purification you will get a different meaning from it each time and this is why when you do it and uh, Uh, guidance when you sit in a satsang environment and we all learn together that knowledge becomes very profound and very helpful so with this we conclude this shloka and we will start with shloka number 3 next sunday and uh, now we will do bhagavat um, gita mata aarti and we will conclude the satsanga and uh, this is this dhyana yoga this chapter of dhyana yoga meditation i know is very important so we have to patiently understand it listen and most importantly practice yeah without practice all this is only theory we may say we understand it but we have to practice it and then if you are sincere mind you then god will give you tests just like your teacher in your classroom tests you to see if you understood the subject or not much in the same way god will give you a practical test and if we are ready for it we will pass and if we are not ready for it we will fail and we will have to repeat the process it works the same exact way but when we have sharanagati when we and actually you should be uh, concerned if tests don't come an important thing by the way if tests are not coming then either the guru is not interested or you are not putting in enough effort that's pretty simple so you have to ask yourself if i am sincere then complete sharanagati to god bhagwan ko sab arpan kar do aur jab pariksha aayegi to iska matlab bhagwan aap se bahut pyar karte hain jo pariksha de rahe hain to test you to see how you handle it to uske baad you will and then he gives you a guru if you have any questions clarify ask but be clear on this path because when we are confused jab humko um, sure nahi rehta whether this direction is right or that one then we make mistakes so therefore we end with the shloka and we will do aarti now and thank you all for joining in all of you lovely beautiful souls om shanti 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 hari om tat sat जय भगवद गीते जय भगवद गीते हरि कमल विहारी हरि कमल विहारी सुंदर सुपुनीते ओम जय भगवद गीते कर्म सुमर प्रकाशिनी काम सत
हरा हो मैया का हरा तत्व ज्ञान विकाशिनी तत्व ज्ञान विकाशिनी वेद्या ब्रह्म क्षमस्व जय जय करुणाभे श्री महादेव शंभो जय जय करुणाभे श्री महादेव शंभो जय जय करुणाभे श्री महादेव 
शंभो समस्तोका सुखिनो ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्म आग्नो ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्य ब्रह्म कर्म सीन अहम वैश्वानरो भूत्वा प्राणीना देहमाश्रिता प्राण अपान सयुक्ता पचा मनम चतुर्वेदम हरि ओ तत्सत ब्रह्म अर्पणमस्तु समस्त लोका सुखी नौ भवन्तु ओ शांति 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 once again thank you to all of you divine souls for listening and for attending the satsanga we do it every sunday at 10:30 am uh, pacific standard time and on fridays we have yog vashishta at 7:30 pm so god bless you all as you start your weekend may may it be filled with uh, start your new work week coming monday and lots of blessings from god and our guru and from all of us to every one of you you are our big satsang family we are all one if you have any questions feel free to ask swami lalita priyananda ji or myself we do take individual questions because we believe that clarity is very important on this path so whether it's on messenger or uh, whatsapp or um, facebook or however you communicate um, that is fine um, also we do one on ones for serious aspirants if you are a serious aspirant and you want to go deeper you want to learn more uh, you can request uh, a 20 30 minute interview or discussion which we generally we are always very busy but never too busy for serious aspirants so we no <laughs> so we... sessions again have only small ones so thank you very much we care for you and uh, may you continue to walk on this holy path and may our guru's blessings he is in our breath as you can see in every pore of our body and may you also experience that bliss oh yeah, but do not live in doubt shanti yes. shanti ask questions shanti yes that's ask questions it. to clarify do not live in doubt because some some understand things wrongly and then they spread it out wrongly yes which is very uh it's not good so if you want to have clarification or just a little bit of clarification about something or maybe the entire word or entire topic so please do not hesitate and also i want to inform that any one of you wanting to join the whatsapp uh, recording which i often do and i have more of that then let me know through messenger give me your very very small way just give me your number so i want to join the whatsapp group in that records it's a bank of recordings where you don't have to communicate or say something or post something you cannot even post anything just extract it listen and enjoy and be in bliss and personally you can ask me questions on my personal whatsapp so it is just to be having a stack of recordings so that you don't have to go search here and there and thursdays uh, shrimad bhagavat mahapuran it's i i call it swadhyaya satsanga because that's my swadhyaya and i want to uh, offer it to some who want to join uh, while i am going through it i want to carry some of you also serious aspirants so that um we learn together or we go together um for it's repetition for me but then for some of you it will be first time but it's very in a very profound small way and last thursday i'm sorry it uh, abruptly it stopped i started off after a while and then it abruptly stopped to facebook something interacted that it stopped recording 
So hopefully with God's grace, Guru Dev's grace, we'll be able to continue from coming Thursday, little by little. And if you want, if you are interested, you can go back and listen to Srimad Bhagavat Mahapuran Sapta Parayan that is also recorded on Facebook. Um, you can start from there because it's from right from the beginning and I'm continuing this Thursday uh, satsanga from there. Hari Om, Hari Om Tat Sat, Sat. Blessings. Om Tat Sat, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. 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 Shanti.